I'm sure it hasn't been lost on you that Bill Barr and Mr. Donahue have been on, um, in Barr's case, uh, can only be viewed as a rehabilitation tour. And Mr. Donahue is a celebrated witness in the January 6 um, public hearings. He's got a very different role in here. He was someone who I know you like and respect as an attorney, but Bill Barr trusted him more than you to investigate what? Tell us the story. Oh, sure. Uh, this was the uh, campaign finance violations arising out of the Michael Cohen guilty plea. And, um, you know, the while the case was shut down during that two month period, I get a call from one of Bill Barr's aides. And who was that? You ran into uh, uh, Seth Ducharme. And he says, uh, Jeff, um, uh, I spoke to the attorney general. Um, uh, Rich Donahue is going to be overseeing the uh, campaign finance violation cases that you're accused from. And, and Rich Donahue, a U.S. attorney from another district, is going to come into your district and essentially take the supervision of those cases away from the Southern District. And, and he said, uh, you know, the, the Attorney General Barr has spoken to Rich, and Rich has agreed to do it, and the briefings are going to start in two days. He's going to come into the Southern District, and, and the team is going to brief him on where the cases stand. And I said, Seth, that's not going to happen. And he said, Jeff, you, you don't understand. This is not a request by the Attorney General. This is a directive from the Attorney General. Uh, and that's a word we can get into that, that Bill Barr liked to use a lot. And, and I said, uh, Seth, uh, Rich Donnie, who is not stepping foot in the Southern District of New York, and, and the conversation ended. What do you think Bill Barr thought Mr. Donahue would do that SDNY would not? Look, Bill Barr clearly trusted Rich Donahue a lot more uh, than he trusted me or anyone else at the Southern District of New York. In fact, Rich Donahue then went to join uh, Bill Barr in D.C. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, later in the, his tenure. So there was clearly a close relationship there. What do you think when you su see these people present themselves publicly as bulwarks against a, a, a coup plot, um, when you experience such a perversion and assault on the rule of law under their thumb? I think we should look at people prior to the November 2020 election, right? Uh, Trump when Trump lost the election, I think a lot of people went through a personal calculus of their personal self-interest. Uh, and, and, and after the election and after Trump lost, uh, Barr and others scurried off the ship. But I think we should examine, I think we should examine whether they followed their oath prior to the election. That's the inquiry that's important to me. And prior to the election, Barr did the bidding of the president, and he politicized the Department of Justice. And Barr couldn't have done what he did without the help of others in the Department of Justice. And you name names. I mean, a Senate judiciary is going to start investigating this chapter. Who should be retaining defense counsel? Uh, that's really not for me to say. Well, uh, who was the group that politicized, sought to politicize the work of your office? Well, well Bill Barr is the person who had ultimate responsibility for me. Bill Barr should have been standing in front of those magnificent doors of the Department of Justice, stopping political infer interference from entering. And instead, he was the chief architect of that interference. Talk about the Ukraine probes and what Bill Barr's vision was for that and why that mattered. Well, that was just crazy, right? I, I think he wanted to keep control. He didn't want the cases to spiral out of control. Just the, remind us what the cases were. Sure. Again. The Southern District had indicted Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman. These are associates of Rudy Giuliani. Mm -hmm. And they had various dealings in Ukraine. And we were investigating those dealings. And it was our case. The Ukraine investigation was ours. What Bill Barr did was he set up this cockamamie system, this what he called the intake system in the field as if it was some recognized thing. You know, I asked my, all my senior staff, have, have you ever heard of this before? They hadn't. I asked uh, Bill Sweeney, the FBI head, have you ever heard of this? He hadn't. It was crazy. Because usually if, if an individual has information about a matter, they go to the U.S. Attorney's Office that is handling that matter. But, but Barr set up the U.S. Attorney in Pittsburgh to take in evidence, including evidence that Rudy Giuliani was given. Like, we were a cab ride away from Rudy Giuliani. 
in this situation, Rudy Giuliani was required, you know, to, to drive all the way out to Pittsburgh to, uh, to provide whatever evidence. We wanted to see the evidence. And when we asked for the evidence that Pittsburgh was collecting, and when, when uh, Bill Sweeney, the head of the FBI in New York, asked for that evidence, he was, it was declined. And we're talking about an FBI, what's called a 302, a summary of interview. We wanted to see it. With whom? Which what kind of that was with That was, uh, I believe, with uh, Rudy Giuliani. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we wanted to see it. It was relevant to what we were looking for, in, in, into. Sweeney wanted to see it. Sweeney asked for it. And he was declined. I talk about this in the book. He was declined access to it. I mean, what's, what's clear in the book is that it wasn't just, I mean, the, the corruption interferes with the FBI's ability to function, as you said. And Ukraine caught my eye for multiple reasons. One, because John Bolton has an account from the foreign policy side of the perversion of diplomacy and normal government order by inserting Rudy Giuliani into U.S. foreign policy. It was also testified to in impeachment one. You have a very parallel account of the perversion of the rule of law with Rudy Giuliani inserted by Bill Barr. Why do you think he did that? I think Barr did it because he wanted to keep control of all things Ukraine. And Why? he didn't want it to spiral out of control because it could affect people. It could affect people, perhaps friends of the president. Well, friends of the president were already affected. There were pictures of Levin Igor with, with Rudy and, and with the Trump family. Do you think he was protecting Trump? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that Bill Barr's modus operandi was to please the president. Are you heartened by a congressional investigation into the politicization of DOJ? Oh, I'm happy uh, that uh, Congress has indicated that it's going to be inquiring into this. You know, the, the reason I, I wrote the book was I wanted people to understand the full extent of the, you know, egregious political intervention by, you know, Trump's Justice Department into the cases of the Southern District. and. To the extent that the congressional inquiry is going to shed light on that, I think it's a good thing. I think that transparency here is great because it, it might be able to stop this from happening again. Transparency and, and an airing of everything that happened under Barr and Trump? Well, particularly with this congressional uh, inquiry. I think that that's, you know, that's a great venue to really get at the, at the truth. Do you believe that, I mean, everything that's in here is documented like the attorney that you are. I mean, do you believe that there are emails and records that will back up your so telling? I was just going to say that, you know, what we have is the interaction between Maine Justice and the Southern District, right? We have those uh, exchanges. We were never privy to uh, what the conversations were behind the curtain at Maine Justice. And I think that's what's going to be very interesting when, the, uh, when Congress comes in and starts reviewing those documents. It seems that the inspector general's office, I don't know if Mr. Horowitz is still there, but he did a lot of investigations about the last Justice Department he investigated Jim Comey. He looked at Andrew McCabe. I mean, would you like to see the DOJ IG investigate these situations as well? Yeah, I know Mike Horowitz. We were actually AUSAs together in the Southern District, and I respect them a lot. Uh, but there's a big difference. There's a world of difference between a congressional inquiry and an IG inquiry. You know, a congressional inquiry can move very fast. Yeah. You just heard that they want these documents in a matter of weeks. An IG inquiry, you know, can take years. To complete and and your access to information is not the same. I, I think I believe an IG doesn't have authority to compel the testimony of someone who's not left. Uh, who's left the department. And that's I, I think the Congress is going to want that ability because all the players here have left. They're all they were all political appointees and now they've all left. You take a scalpel to the main DOJ team. You carve out Rod Rosenstein for some praise. You said he let you do your work. Well, he let us, he let the Cohen search warrant go through. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he, was, he was behind us on the Hawk Bank prosecution. I want to ask you about the Hawk Bank prosecution. This to me was, it, it's wonky, but our, our, our viewers will be there um, with us on this. It is, again, there's a parallel in U.S. foreign policy where this was perverted based on Donald Trump's businesses. And you tell the legal story for the very first time about how prosecution was perverted um, in your telling for political purposes. But I just want to ask you one more question about a congressional probe and about Barr's team and about the interference you faced. 
Do you believe that, I mean, some of these people were there before Barr arrived. I mean, Ed O'Callaghan ran the National Security Division. He's there when Sessions is there. Um, he's, he's a through line in the interference. Bill Barr writes in his book that his one biggest regret was not giving Ed O'Callaghan your job, U.S. Attorney for SDNY. Um, do you... And by the way, that confirms something that is in the book that I heard uh, through an ally, an anonymous ally at Maine Justice. Um, we were in the midst of the Hawk Bank uh, conflict. I mean, we were butting heads. Barr and I were really butting heads. I didn't agree with anything that he wanted to do on that case. And I got a call from an ally who said, you know, Jeff, uh, you know, you keep pushing the way you're pushing on Hawk Bank, and the attorney general is going to fire you and replace you with Ed O'Callaghan. So it's interesting that Barr writes that Barr writes in, about in that. his book. It's, it's again with Trump, most things are are, are in the open. Um, I, I want to ask you one more question about Barr's team. Uh, Ed was the pay dag. Uh, Brian Rabbit was his chief of staff. Do you believe that, that Rod Rosenstein tried to balance those types out? Or, or tell me how your interactions were so heavily weighted toward those who were comfortable applying so much pressure on SDNY. You know, it, it's, it's really a mystery to me how that behavior could have been modeled and, and you know, by the higher ups there. And I, you know, the only thing I can think is that, you know, they must have had authority from very high up in the department for the things that they did. And you think a congressional investigation will answer that question? I, 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 I do. Yes, I do.